Your fattening cattle seem healthy. You feed them, water them, check their weight, but a deadly disease could already be inside the herd, spreading silently. One wrong move and months of work, thousands of dollars, even your entire feedlot could vanish. In the next 30 seconds, you'll discover the most dangerous disease in fattening cattle and how to protect your herd before it's too late. The enemy I'm talking about isn't some rare exotic illness. It's something so common, so deceptively simple, that thousands of producers underestimate it every single year, right up until the moment they're staring at devastating losses. It's called bovine respiratory disease, or BRD. But don't let the simple name fool you. Many old-timers call it shipping fever, and that name gets closer to the truth because it's not just one disease, it's a perfect storm. It's a complex, a brutal combination of stress, viruses, and bacteria, all working together to bring a strong, healthy animal to its knees. And fattening cattle, especially those newly arrived at a feedlot, are the perfect target. Think of it like this. You've just brought in a new batch of steers. They've been through the stress of transport, the chaos of the sale barn, and the confusion of a new environment with new herdmates. Their immune systems, their natural shields, are down. They are completely vulnerable. This is the moment the first wave of the attack begins, and it's completely invisible. This first wave is almost always a virus. Viruses like IBR, BVD, or PI3 are like saboteurs. They don't necessarily kill the animal on their own, but they sneak past the weakened defenses and open the gates for the real killers. They damage the delicate tissues of the lungs, creating the perfect breeding ground for what comes next. And what comes next is the second wave, the bacterial invasion. Bacteria like Manhamia hemolytica or Pastorella multicida, which might have been living harmlessly in the animal's upper respiratory tract, now have a wide open door to the lungs. Once they get in there, they multiply with explosive speed, causing severe pneumonia, tissue damage, and overwhelming infection. The animal's lungs literally begin to fill with fluid and decay. At this point, the battle is often already lost. So how do you spot it before disaster strikes? This is where 99% of producers make their first critical mistake. They look for the obvious signs, a deep hacking cough, thick yellow nasal discharge, a high fever, labored breathing. But here's the terrifying truth that very few will tell you. By the time you see these signs, the disease is not starting. It is in its advanced stages. The damage is already severe, the infection is deeply entrenched, and the chances of that animal ever reaching its full weight potential have plummeted, even if it survives. You're no longer preventing a problem, you're trying to salvage a wreck. And even worse, that visibly sick animal has likely been a silent super spreader for days, infecting dozens of others in the pen. So, you ask, what are the real first signs? The ones that give you a fighting chance? You have to become a master observer of your cattle. You have to look for the subtle cues, the whispers of trouble before the shouting begins. The first sign is almost always behavioral. It's the steer that's just a little bit slow to get to the feed bunk. It's the one that hangs back from the herd when you walk the pen. It's the one that doesn't have that bright, alert look in its eye. Its head might be held just a little lower than the others. Its ears might be droopy, not actively tracking sounds. It might stand with its back slightly arched. These are not dramatic signs of sickness. They are signs of depression, of an animal that just doesn't feel right. This is your window of opportunity. This is the moment when you can pull that animal, check its temperature, and begin treatment with a high chance of full recovery while also preventing a wider outbreak. Waiting for the cough is like waiting for your house to be engulfed in flames before you call the fire department. You must spot the smoke first. Now, let's talk about the single biggest, most catastrophic mistake that turns a manageable case of BRD into a full-blown feedlot disaster. And the worst part is that almost everyone does it without realizing the immense risk they are taking. 
It's the simple act of mixing new, highly stressed cattle directly with your established herd, or even with other new cattle from a different source, without a proper isolation and acclimatization period. Has this ever happened on your ranch? A new truckload arrives, they look healthy enough, so you put them straight into the main fattening pen to save time and space. You've just lit the fuse on a ticking time bomb. You have no idea what viruses those new animals are carrying, and their stress levels are through the roof, making them perfect incubators for disease. You've created a lethal cocktail of different pathogens and stressed out immune systems. It is the single fastest way to trigger a massive, costly BRD outbreak that can sweep through your entire operation. So how do we avoid this? How do we build a fortress around our herd? It comes down to a few non-negotiable, science-backed best practices that work for the producer with 10 head just as well as the one with 10,000. First is preconditioning. If you're buying cattle, demand that they come from a program where they were weaned at least 45 days before shipping. They should already be accustomed to eating from a bunk and drinking from a trough, and most importantly, they should have received their core vaccinations against the key respiratory viruses. This isn't a cost, it's an investment that pays for itself 10 times over by reducing sickness and death loss. Second, think about transport. The shorter and less stressful the journey, the better. Ensure the truck isn't overcrowded, has good ventilation, and that the animals are handled calmly and quietly during loading and unloading. Every bit of stress you can reduce is another brick in your wall of defense. Third, and this is the absolute golden rule, is a strict quarantine protocol. Every single new animal that sets foot on your property must be isolated from the main herd for a minimum of 21 to 30 days. No exceptions. This gives them time to recover from transport stress, allows any hidden diseases to surface where they can be treated without exposing your entire herd, and gives you a chance to get them on your vaccination and health program. During this time, they should have access to clean water and high-quality forage before you even think about introducing grain. Fourth is what I call the low-stress receiving protocol. When new cattle arrive, they don't need to be immediately processed. They need rest. Put them in a clean pen with plenty of fresh water and good quality hay. Let them rest for 24 to 72 hours before you run them through the chute for vaccinations, ear tags, or implants. Let their immune systems recover a little bit first. Pushing them too hard, too fast is a recipe for disaster. And fifth, build a strong relationship with your veterinarian. Don't just call them when you have a wreck. Work with them to design a preventative health protocol tailored to your specific region and operation. They are your single greatest asset in this fight. They know which bugs are common in your area and which vaccines will be most effective. Use their expertise to stay ahead of the game. Remember, fighting bovine respiratory disease isn't about having the strongest antibiotics. It's about smart, proactive management. It's about understanding that you are not just feeding cattle, you are managing stress, immunity, and biosecurity. The steer that never gets sick will always, always be more profitable than the one you have to treat, no matter how good the treatment is. You're not just preventing a disease, you are protecting your hard work, your financial investment, and the future of your operation. Every step you take to reduce stress and bolster immunity is money in the bank. This knowledge, this commitment to excellence is what separates the average cattleman from the truly successful one. It's what turns a gamble into a predictable and profitable business. You have the power to protect your herd, but it starts with seeing the invisible enemy and respecting the silent threat. We are all in this together, a community of producers dedicated to raising healthy animals and building strong, sustainable operations. This channel, Biggest Bulls and Cow, is here for you to provide the knowledge you need to succeed. If you found this information valuable, if it opened your eyes to the real threat of BRD, then help our community grow. Hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss our next video where we'll break down feed formulations for maximum weight gain. Drop a comment below and tell me, what is the biggest health challenge you've faced on your ranch? I read every single one. 
And finally, if you know another rancher, another student, or anyone who could benefit from this, please share this video with them. We're here to grow together as responsible, knowledgeable stewards of the land and our livestock. Let's build healthier herds and stronger businesses together.